Hello folks, this is Hugo Mantilla again. Uh, I hope that you guys had enjoyed the previous videos with some very basic concepts on evolution, but are concepts that we need in order to face what we are going to look at, that is the phylogenetic comparative methods. But before getting into the final workshop on this subject, uh, I would like to, as I mentioned in, in the previous video, I would like to give you guys some ideas on how to handle trees in the program R Studio. What I would like to do now is just to open our free downloadable program R. So it's a very useful program. To, um, uh, to work with trees, so is what we are gonna do. So let's let's move and find the program that it should be here. My computer. See our studio. You open the program. Okay, and let me explain to you guys. Uh, what we have in here. So we have the console and here is the place in which you are going to have the output of the running of your script. The script is going to be here in this box and then here you are going to have uh, the, what they call the global environment but it's, it's kind of a historical record of what you are doing uh, in orders and here you have the place in which you have are going to have all the plots and all the graphic output and also some text and information that is, is displaying um, in a better way for you. So let's go and open a file and basically what you need to do is to set your working directory. So this is the, the same script that you guys have script one manipulating trees in R. I'll open it so it opens like different things that I already have but let me go and uh, start with the first order and the first order is to install packages ape file tools and Geiger so basically you place your cursor on top of this line and you can go and do run so here in blue it means that uh, the, the programs are installed so you can press control enter and it is another way to run these lines so in as soon as you have the the, the packages down uh, installed so we need to go on and require these these packages but notice this that when you have this symbol the number symbol uh, it means that you have a comment and this comment is, is gives you the idea an idea of what's going on give you tips and guidance to navigate through the script so uh, let's go on do the require so require these three, three packages. Okay, guys, uh, as soon as you require your packages, uh, then you have this question mark in here, uh, line 24, 25, and 26 with the three different packages. You have the question mark. So that question mark, if you run that line, so it's gonna show you on the on this display, this box of display, uh, information about your packages, a description about your packages. For example, in this case, uh, let me read a little bit. Uh, is APE provides functions for reading, writing, manipulating, anal analyzing, and simulating phylogenetic trees and DNA sequences. Um, that's perfect. 
So it's, it, we could do the same thing for, for example, PyTools, the other program. So PyTools, what it does is provides function for phylogenetic comparative biology, as well as several other functions for tree inference, manipulation, and analysis that are not implemented in other R packages. So that one is, is, a, is a one that we would like to explore. And finally, Geiger uh, is a package for macroevolution, simulation, and estimating parameters related to diversification from comparative phylogenetic data. So we have three packages here that are exactly the ones that we want to have in order to complete our tax that is uh, to perform some comparative uh, analysis, evolutionary comparative analysis. Okay, guys, we are going to start constructing our trees and presented that in R. There are different ways in which you can uh, actually represent a phylogeny, and this is exactly what we are going to do here. So the first thing is we are going to go to line 34, and then you have the function tree. You, have, you guys have this weird arrow built with this kind of greater than symbol and then a hyphen and then we have n equals six it means that we are going to create a tree a rooted tree that has six tips so let's do this and the first thing that you guys notice is that uh, nothing appears in your in your box on the right side would you display all the things that are graphic and it's because so you need to go to the next order and say plot. As soon as you plot, you have your tree with your six tips. So the, the name of the tips at the end, so they come at random. So they can have like, not necessarily an order. For example, here, uh, talking from, from the top to the bottom, you have three, six, two, four, one, and five. Well, there's another way in which you can actually uh, represent a phylogeny and it is called the Newick uh, structure and this Newick structure so it responds to a hierarchy a hierarchy of uh, which is also represented here by this parenthesis so A is closely related to B A and B are closely related to C A, B and C are, are sister groups of D and E and D and E are sister species or whatever individuals, and all these A, B, C, D, E are closely related to F. So let's do this analysis, and again, so in order to, to see the tree, you have to plot it, and we have here the structure, the new structure for this set of data. Um, finally, um, we can put names on this on this uh, structure so instead of having like a b c and d so you can have like homo pongo so different primate names for example in this case and let's say read is a it's a tree read tree but it has text and the text is going to be represented by uh, this at the end of the tips excuse me so let's plot it, and we have here Galago, Atelis, Macaca, Pongo, and Homo. Okay, the, the next thing is how to uh, download data from a Nexus file. But the first thing that we need to do here is just uh, verify that the working directory, which is here in the session, um, in this session box in the top, so it's the six order. So we have file, edit, code, view, plots, and session. And within session, so you display this, display this window and you go to um, set working directory and you can go and choose a directory. So I'm gonna go here to my, my file RStudio, in which is the file that in which I have the Nexus file. So it should be in your working directory. Open it 
And as soon as you have this open, so you can go to your to tree number four, which is read nexus, and plot it. And this tree that we have here, it says in Spanish, arbol carnivorous that nexus. So it's a tree of all the car the carnivores. But you guys can see that is <laughs> the the letters, so the fonts are the font is very large, so and we cannot see anything. So let me fix this so you can go to plot here and you can add a comma and then write sex equals and the, the font size 0 0.05 for example let's see if it works well very nice so we have a more clear tree here with a lot of taxa if you zoom in it so we won't see the letters so there are too many uh, taxa for this to be able to see uh, for, for, for us to be able to see what is going on in here but you guys can see the structure. So this is the tree that we are gonna use in, in our next uh, uh, workshop. Well, I think that we cover for now the, this part representing trees in R, some sort of editing, just an overview. I'm pretty sure that you guys may know more than me uh, working with this, with this um, program, but definitely it's a great so let's move to the next session. Uh, we are in line 55, 55, and then we are going to have uh, what I'm going to show you is a series of commands that help you with information uh, containing your in your files. So, and in this case, information that is related with the trees. And what we have is a, a tree, the, the function the, of six tips. So uh, first we are going to ask, so what kind of object is this, uh, this object tree? The object that I created is in between the brackets here in the, the parentheses, excuse me, and tree. So when you run this, it's going to tell you that this file is called phylo, the class of the tree, the kind of object is phylo. And then you can also run uh, or perform the command tree. And it's gonna show you that this is a phylogenetic tree with six tips and five internal nodes. And it's gonna give you the names of these different tips, T3, T4, T5, T6, T2, T1. And here you'll see uh, the same information. Well, summary tree, as its name implies, so it has the means, the variance, the distribution summary, uh, the minimum number, the maximum number, the first quartile, the mean, the third quartile, and this is a node root age, and it gives you also the names of the tips, and it has no uh, names for the or for the nodes, so they are not labeled, so it gives you this information. Then you go to Three H length and course is going to give information on the on the distances that you have from the nodes to the tips. If you plot the tree, so this one, so and you note and you uh, put labels on your node. That's what we are going to do. So here we have like label uh, is seven, eleven, ten, nine, eight. So those are the nodes and label the tips. The tips are one, two, three, four, five, six, and then <coughs> label the three tips here. So it's gonna give you the information here. T3, T4, T5, T6, T2, T1. Well, for visualize uh, trees, so we are, let me go back to our tree, so we have here and a rooted tree, like this one, and this is the function. Also, we have another plot. This is this is the radial 
or the fan, excuse me, the fan representation of the same phylogeny. You have the radial representation of the phylogeny, and we have the classical one of the, of the cladogram. So we can modify the format of a tree. Let me put here the labels, so you can change, for example, the offset. Let's say that is is too much, the space that you have in between the names and the and the tips. So here, excuse me, I'm going to put two. Let me put this, and you guys can see here that it's getting closer. I'm going to put it closer, even closer. So let's run this again, and you have it really close. And then we can add colors. Just to the tips and, and tip labels with colors and it's going to give you these these colors so in here it's not showing up the this one because it's it's, it's out of the edge of the of this page well uh, we are going to edit these trees um, the first thing that I'm going to show you guys is uh, how to cut some branches and this is very important because for the analysis that we are going to perform to our comparative analysis uh, we are going to need to cut some of the branches of the tree prune them um, first uh, we create a, another tree and because we are going to do some rotation to of these nodes so this new tree is called rotated tree and uh, this is gonna be the tree rotated in no, node nine. So, but this is first, let's plot this tree. So we have here uh, the nodes labeled. So you have seven, 11, seven, 11, eight, nine, 10. Okay, and we are gonna also uh, label the tips. So here we have the tips one, two, three, four, five, and six. And how do you cut a part of the tree? So the first thing is that uh, you need to uh, put a name to the part of the tree that you wanted to cut. So in this, ca in this uh, case, it's gonna be clayed, the arrow tips rotated, tree node nine. So this is, this is what I call what I'm going to call clade. Let me do it. Yes. So a strip function shows us the tree object has four elements. This is here. When you call clade. So clade shows you that it has T5 and T2. So this is going to give you information on the tips of this plane. And when you uh, perform this command prunt that tree drop tip rotated tree clade so it's gonna cut all this part of the tree so let's do it plot it and here is what we have so relabel the, the nodes relabel the tips and this is what we get so this is are very simple commands but are commands that are very useful when you perform more complex analysis. Well, this next series of commands are commands that are dedicated to put names or they work in giving names to the tips. So in this case, we have here, for example, that uh, we have tip uh, number four, Tip one, tip three, tip six, etc., and then uh, we are going to change it by other names. So we are going to call that a species, and then we are going to put the arrow and C, and in parentheses we put this in between uh, parentheses, but with question uh, quoting marks. So let's do this and create in this tree and plot it. So we have a new tree, which we have a species six, a species five, a species four, a species three, a species one, and a species two. But we, could, we can give this 
tips a different name, like for example, Soccer Stars. This is something that I created and I have the same order, as you guys see here in, in line 125, is the same order, but I changed the name. So this is called Soccer Stars. This is the new naming. And you have the arrow, the weird arrow that we mentioned at the beginning of the class. C, parentheses, and in, in quoting marks, we have Rodriguez, James Rodriguez, Neymar, Pelé, Hugo Sanchez, and the Messi and Maradona. So let's do this. So put these names on, on which tree in this, this tree? This is the name of the tree, rotated tree, steep labeled soccer star. And this is the and then plot it and we have here our tree with Maradona, Messi, Sanchez, Pelé, Rodriguez and Neymar. Well it has a title so in line 134 we see the title sport all-time idols and also we can put some axis phylo axis with the distances we can put some boxes a box uh, around the, the tree and we have a bigger box here in green as you guys can see well and this is important information for labeling your trees and giving names well we reached the end of the workshop and I hope that everything would be of your pleasure and, and you guys have enjoyed this, this information and it's very useful actually. So as a summary what we did, was so we manipulate trees using the program R, in particular the packages um, Ape, Philo and Geiger. And what is important when you work in this type of environments is the script. So you can copy and paste and modify your script. And this is the crucial part. And be familiar with that. It's not very complicated. These programs have become uh, more and more friendly, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the class. So uh, this is something that is uh, very useful. And what is next? So next, we are going to jump into phylogenetic comparative analysis, the famous PICS, and we are going to work, as I already anticipate, uh, with some data on carnivores. So we need to download also these files I have here. So you guys can see here, I'm going to send an email with this information. And then, so we are going to uh, test some interesting hypotheses using these this um, phylogenetic hypothesis of relationship so to test some other hypothesis related with the behavior of these animals just as an example just as an example we're going to have a couple of examples more one very beautiful with hummingbirds which is uh, of my own research and well okay this is the end of this part let's move to the next part thanks